Dear students, welcome to SETI Botany classes. This is the second video of life cycle of terrace. In first video, we have studied about morphology of terrace. In this video, we will study about reproduction in terrace. Now, in reproduction, we will study what is the structure of sporophyll. Sporophylls are the leaves which bear the sporangia. When sporangia are born on the leaves, leaf is called as sporophyll. And what is the structure of the sporangia? And how sporangium dehis open to liberate the spores? First, we'll study about sporophylls. In the first video, we studied in detail that leaves in the terrace, they are big in size, they are pinnately compound leaves, they are big in size, and they are made up of pinna or leaflets. On these leaflets, on the margins, uh, we can see our group of sporangia. Now, this brown colored group of sporangia, which is born on the underside of the leaves, that is on the ventral side of the leaflet, are called as sorus. Group of sporangia is called as sorus, but here sorus is continuous. So this continuous sorus is also called as sinosorus. So spores are produced inside the sporangia. Sporangia are born on the leaves called as sporophylls. Sporangia are present on the lower side of the pinules. These are present in groups called as sorus or sori. Sorus is the singular word and sori is the plural word because they're continuous. So this is called as sinosorus. And each sorus is protected by the reflexed margin of the fertile pinna. This is called as false inducing. This we will study in the next slide. And inside the sporangia are present spores. Now, this is the fertile pinna. Fertile pinna mean on which sporangia or group of sporangia they are born, which is called as sinosaurus. Now, this is the fertile pinna. We can see this is the sorus part. And this, because this sorus is continuous, so this is called as sinosaurus. And leaf is covering this sinosaurus, so this is called as a reflexed margin. You can see, I've shown this white color. This is the covering present around the and this is the other color. This is called as sorus. And this is covering. This leaf has been uh, covering the sorus. So this covering of the sorus by the turned leaf is called as uh, false inducium. This is because this is not a true covering. This is being formed by the, uh, you can say, reflexing of the leaves. So this is called as a reflexed margin of the leaf or false inducium. Now, if we cut the transverse section of the leaf, leaflet, or pinna of the terrace, we can see it's an autumn. Now, this is the outermost layer, which is called as epidermis, protected by cuticle. And this is the lower epidermis layer, which is being protected by, again, cuticle. And these are the midrib extensions. Uh, this is midrib part, actually. This is the midrib extension, which is made up of thick wall tissue called as sclerenchymatous tissue. And this part is the midrib part which is made up of, this part is xylem, surrounded by phloem. Now, this is the midrib part, and this is the part where sorus is born. Up between upper and lower epidermis are present mesophyll tissue, and this is the tissue which is having chloroplast helping in photosynthesis. Now, this part is turning down, and this leaf is turning down, so this is called as false inducium. Now, we can see here cushion-like structure, this is called as a receptacle, and this is the vascular supply to the receptacle. Vascular supply means xylem and phloem. And on the receptacle or cushion-like structure are present group of sporangia. Group of sporangia are called as sorus. Sori is plural word. Sporangia, sorus is singular word. And this, these are the young sporangia, and these are the uh, mature sporangia. So this is the internal structure of the fertile pinna or leaflet of the terrace. Now, these are the sporangia which are born on the leaf and leaf is called as sporophyll. If we see the structure of sporangium, it is differentiated into stalk. This is the stalk by which it is attached on the receptacle. So this is the stalk part. And this is the body of the sporangium. Now, sporangium is covered by a jacket. 
Now, three by fourth part of the jacket is called as annulus. And this part is called as stomium. Now, here we can see this part is thickened radially and tangentially. And here, this part of the annulus is thin. These part, they are thick part. So this part of the jacket up to this, this is called as annulus. And this part is called as stomium. We can see these two lip cells. And upper to the lip cell are present area, which is again thin walled. This zone is called as epistomium. And below the lip cell, this zone is called as hypostomium. So this part, one by fourth part of the wall of the sprengium is thin. Three by fourth part is thickened on the radial and the tangential walls. Now inside the sprengium are present sporogenous tissue. This is again uh, the structure of sprengium. This part is stomium. This part is annulus. Uh, this is again uh, surface of the sprengium showing annulus and stomium. Now here again, we can see the stru inside structure of the sprengium. This is the outermost jacket, which we have discussed in detail. And this is the sporogenous tissue, which is present in the young stage of the sprengium. And this is surrounded by a nourishing layer. This is called as tapetum, which will later on disorganize to give the nourishment to the sporogenous tissue. Now this sporogenous tissue, will undergo metamorphosis to form the spore mother cell. Now this, because sporangium is diploid, so spores, sporogenous tissue is also diploid, spore mother cells, they are diploid. The spore mother cell will undergo meiotic cell divisions to form haploid spores. Almost 48 haploid spores, they are produced inside the sporangium. Now, how this sprengium is open to liberate the spores? So uh, we have seen in the previous slide that this part of the wall of the sprengium is thickened on the radial and the tangential wall. And this is the thin part. Now, when this sprengium is exposed to the external environmental condition, if external environmental conditions, they are dry, they start losing water to the external environment. And when it start losing water to the external environment, now what will happen actually, we can see that this is the wall of the sprengium, right? And this is the annulus part we are talking about. Uh, like uh, we can uh, make it somewhat thickened to show that this part is thickened on the radial and the tangential walls like this. What will happen basically when they start losing water to the external environmental condition? Now this part, which is thin part, this part is thin part. Now this will start losing water to the external environmental condition because this part is thick, this will not be affected. And this will be just sucked inside like this. This will be sucked like this. Now when this is sucking, so this will lose the water and this will shrink and whole annulus will be shrinked. When this will shrink, because this part of the, uh, you can say a sprengium is thin. So here, this will be pulled upward. Now this is the lip part. This is being pulled, right? Ultimately, this will rupture from here and this will liberate the spores toward the outer side. Now when this is being pulled on one side, spores, they are being, uh, exposed to the external environmental condition. And again, this can come back to its original position. This can again come back to its original position and spores will be, will be uh, di dispersed or liberated in the air with a jerk and spores will fall on the substratum or on the soil or with the help of air current, they will fall on a distant soil. And when they will found a suitable environmental condition, uh, these spores, they will start germinating. Now, sprengium will dehisopen to liberate the spores. Now, spores, they are, if we see their shape, they will be rounded in shape and they will be liberated. And each spore will be having thin area. This is called as triradiate ridge. And uh, external wall is thick how this fall on the substratum and then this get suitable environmental condition. 
start germinating for the formation of the gametophyte. So this is all about a structure of sporangium and liberation of the spores, structure of spore, formation of gametophyte. We will watch in the next video. Thank you for watching my video. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe.